prosper, succeed in life. Amen. Amen. And be well. Amen, amen, amen. Thank God. Well, Merry Christmas again. Praise God. We ought to just have Christmas all year long. Well, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I know uh, uh, Mike was, uh, was sharing on Facebook. If, if you don't, um, you know, do Facebook, uh, it's, there's some junk out there. We know that. But, uh, you know, there's some real encouragement there as well, as well as our, our devotionals that go out on our, our email list. Um, I mean, these guys and ladies, uh, I, I mean, they just put together some really awesome words uh, on a regular basis. Uh, anyway, Mike was talking about, uh, uh, you know, he's got just seven kids, just a few. And um, he said it took him, took him five hours to open the presents. <laughs> well, you got to do what you got to do. But um, uh, I, I know... He said, it's a whirlwind. I said, yeah, I can identify with that. You know, I don't know how many kids we had at our house. I don't know. Were they all ours? I don't know. I don't <laughs> but uh, wow, it's something else. Kids get excited about it. Amen. And it's, uh, what's that? Six little ones. Yeah. And, and they all move. I just, just, they don't stay still. They don't stay still. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the, 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 uh, the one great-grandson, Kai, you know, he's, was he one? Is he one? Yeah. I mean, the kid is just, he just eats all day long. <laughs> you know, he's always coming up to you, you know, num-num, num-num, num whatever it is you got, you know, he wants some num-num of it. <laughs> Goes around taking everybody else's drink and drink, everybody just, it's out of control. But anyway, what a blessing. Amen. You know, we had a, a, a fellow that um, uh, on the uh, refinance that we did, and young guy, and, and um, his, his name was Abram. Uh, and uh, I said, man, that's, that's a pretty cool name you got there, Abram. You know? He said, I said, you know what it means? He said, uh, father. I said, well, actually, it means exalted father. And uh, I said, well, that's pretty, pretty cool, you know. And fathers have lots of kids. I, I don't have any children. And... Um, so anyway, uh, they, they, they send a little thing, you know, kind of a review on how they did and all that kind of stuff. And in the remarks, I said, you know, uh, Abram was a really nice guy, but I really pray that he reconsiders having children. I think that would be, it's just, it was a word from the Lord. I'm just saying, you know, but, but anyway, children, the Bible says, are a blessing. I mean, you know, they can get in your hair once in a while, irritate you once in a while, maybe disappoint you even once in a while, but guess what? We love them all, amen? And, um, you know, we're just blessed to have uh, our, our quivers flowing and overflowing and continuing to overflow. <laughs> Hallelujah, amen. How many you know it's been a year? And, uh, you know, we, we look forward to uh, the new year. And, and uh, you know, I just got to let you know that, you know, people think that when the calendar turns from, you know, the 31st to the 1st, like everything is just going to be hunky-dory, you know. I don't even know if you know what that means anymore. but <laughs> And everything, every, everything's just going to be great and wonderful. It's a new year. And uh, I saw somebody put up and said, have you, have, you, have you thought about this at all? Um, 2021, W-O-N. Anyway, <laughs> I don't want to think about it that way uh, because we win. Amen. But, uh, you know, I, I just got to let you know that, um, you know, things, there's a whole lot going on. Anybody know what I'm talking about? There's a whole lot going on right now in the world, but in the United States in particular, there's a whole lot of craziness and, and stuff going on as far as this election was concerned. We all know that. And um, uh, it, it seems like uh, there are, you know, a lot of people, the media, everybody, you know, it seems like they're just ignoring, you know, anything that went on. You know, we don't want to talk about it. Whatever. But um, I'm, I'm believing and I'm praying that, that everything comes out, right. that, that things are exposed uh, because, you know, I love America. And uh, God loves America, and God 
had a plan from the beginning for America, and it is not to become a socialist communist state. So keep praying. Amen. Right. That's right. Amen. But uh, so I just want to, you know, let you know that 2021, because the calendar changes, we're still going to face some stuff. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, you don't want to say amen to that because amen means so be it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it is what it is. And, and we're going to have to deal with some stuff uh, even in the new year. But it does kind of give you a, a, a sense of, OK, but but it will be a new season. Amen. And we have to believe that, you know, spiritually speaking, that we're going to walk into a new season, even though things may still be difficult uh, and in some ways might even get more difficult, but it's still a new season, and God's going to do new things. Amen? Amen? And so we have a task at hand. We have an assignment to be the light in the midst of whatever darkness that we may face in, in the year to come. Uh, if you put the scripture up for me, uh, in Romans chapter 15 and verse 13, how many know the Apostle Paul uh, knew a little bit about uh, difficult times? Amen. You know, back then, uh, you know, we talk about the virus and, and, and you know, we, we certainly have, uh, let's put it this way, respect for sickness and disease. You know, we, we understand that it, it's, it's an enemy and, and that it can destroy lives and so forth. But uh, uh, from what I understand, the, uh, uh, statistically, it's still about a 99% chance of recovery. I know the media, they, they, you know, they pick somebody from across the, the country out of uh, 360 million people. Is that how many is in America? Something like that. 350 million people. And, and they always on the news, they pick out one or two people that died from the virus to let you all know that somebody died. Which to me is, is propaganda. I, 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 you know, I'm just saying, I think it's wrong to continue to put fear out there when you have something that is 99% a uh, recovery rate. Now that's from the CDC. That's not some, you know, special interest, whatever, whatever. I mean, that's, that's the recovery rate. Yeah, there will people die. They die from the flu every year. Thousands of people die from the flu every year. Are you with me? Okay. I know I'm getting political. No, I'm not getting political at all. This is spiritual. Amen. But if you go back to uh, the early days of the church, uh, there was a 99% chance that they were going to be persecuted or killed. But it didn't stop them. Amen. It didn't stop them. And so we need to have that attitude in us. Amen. Christ in us, the hope of glory. We're not going to let whatever go in, whatever's going on, whatever we face, we're not going to let it stop us. And we're not going to be afraid. We're not going to walk in fear. Can you say amen? So, you know, this scripture says, now may God, everybody say God. God. I, like, I like that God. I like that's, that's That's good. That's God. I asked uh, uh, our granddaughter Avery this morning, I said, I said, um, what's the word for today? And she, you know, she got this big smile and she says, um, what is that? What, what do you mean? What's, <laughs> what's, what's the word for the day? And, uh, she, you know, she thinks for a moment and she says, um, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. I said, that's it. That's the word. Jesus is the word. Amen. So we're reading the word. We're reading Jesus. Amen. Now may God, the inspiration and the fountain of hope, or the foundation of all our hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy. I like that. Uncontainable joy. How many know you have joy on the inside of you that only you contain? God's not holding back. Amen. Uncontainable joy and perfect peace. I will keep them in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on me, focused on me. Amen. Listen, if you are listening to the news, you know, the mainstream media on a regular basis, you don't have thoughts of the kingdom. You're feeding on the world and you're feeding on too many times a whole lot of propaganda and a whole lot of fake stuff and a whole lot of negativity. Amen. Okay, it went over big. Perfect peace as you trust him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life 
with his superabundance until you radiate with hope. Radiate with hope. Hallelujah. The uh, Amplified says it this way, May God, the God of your hope, so fill you with all joy and peace in believing, key word there, believing, through the experience of your faith, that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, I like this, bubbling over with hope. How many know that we are in a time where people more than ever need hope? They need, they need a, a perspective that says, hey, there is light at the end of this tunnel and it's not an oncoming train. Amen. Amen. They're going somewhere that's going to be better than it is right now. Amen. Bubbling over with hope. Amen. So, you know, again, the key word there it says trust in the, in the Passion Translation. It says believing uh, in the Amplified Translation. So to trust, you know, and this is the key of, of having that, uh, that ability to radiate hope or allowing, you know, the joy of the Lord, the peace of the Lord that's on the inside of you, the hope of God. You know, in order for it to radiate, radiate out of you, you've got to be somebody that believes and trusts God. Come on, say amen. amen. You know, the, the word there means this, uh, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation through Christ and so fearing nothing from God and content with its earthly lot of whatsoever sort that is. In other words, no matter what comes our way, we have this assurance in God that he is going to be there for us. In fact, he's already been there. Amen. He's already in the future. He's an eternal God. He's in the past, he's in the present, and he's in the future. Amen? So he's already been there. He already knows what we're going to face, and he's already prepared us. Listen, you would not be alive right now if it wasn't for God's plans and purposes for your life. Come on. So that means if you're here and you're here now, then he's equipped you on the inside to not only face whatever stuff we face, but to be that vessel of hope that radiates into the world that's around you. Can you say amen? Hebrews 10, 22 says, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. And, and listen, this is, a, uh, this is a, a, an area many times where believers, you know, they can kind of maybe quote scripture and maybe they go to church or maybe they read the Bible and so forth, but they've never gotten to a point where they are assured in their heart of, of who they really are and, and who God really is in their life. Come on, somebody. It, it, it says in Romans 10, 17, how, how do we get this assurance? Uh, Romans 10, 17 says, so, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Faith comes by hearing. Let me put it this way. Assurance comes by hearing. Assurance comes by hearing. That's why, you listen, you cannot get enough of, of, of the word in your life. You know, it may, it may even sound, you know, for some people like, oh, man, you need, I, I got to read my Bible. I got, you know, there's so many ways that you can get the word in. You can read your Bible. You can listen to your Bible. You can listen to preaching. You can get the word into your life. But you got to spend the time so that assur that assurance is developed. Your heart is assured. It is absolutely positive about who he is and who you are and that you are who God says you are in the earth. Amen. You, you know that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. You know that, you know, Christ in you is the hope of glory. Amen. Wow. So faith comes, assurance comes by hearing the word and hearing the word and hearing the word. Listen, you know, you can talk to some people and they can tell you statistics from the 1950s World Series. They can tell you which bachelorette won, won the last uh, contest. Or, or, or what, uh, who wants to be a millionaire or, or who's, what's the star thing you sing and they, you know, they, you know, the, the next American Idol, that's what it was, yeah. You know, people can name that stuff and, and, and they can tell you about their TV shows and, and they know every movie and every actor and, and they know all that kind of stuff. But then, you know, sometimes the same people can't figure out what scripture fits where. Thank you for that thunderous silence. <laughs> Amen. 
If we're going to be that vessel that radiates hope, then we have got to fill ourselves with that assurance that brings that joy, that brings that peace, and then causes it to radiate out because you are the light. You know, God's got no other plan except you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because he's not calling angels down. You're it. The body of Christ, you know, which you are a part of. We're it. it. There's no plan B. You are it. You know, do I want to go there? No, I don't want to go there. Okay, but anyway. How many know when the, when the first uh, temple was built, fire came down, signifying, this is my house. How many know in the upper room, when they gathered together to wait for the Holy Spirit, fire came down and he said, now this is my house. The church is the house, the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And that fire is only inside of us. But we've got to allow him to get out of us, to radiate. Amen. The word radiate means to emit energy, especially light or heat, like rays or waves that come out from us. You know, I, I may sound like, you know, this is some kind of science fiction thing or something, but I'm telling you, the waves of God's hope, his peace, his joy, it, it, you know, it's coming out of us more than we even realize. But the more that we assure ourselves of who we are and what he's doing and his presence is, is just there all the time, then it begins to radiate even more so out of our lives. And people need hope and they need light. There's so many that are walking in absolute darkness in their lives. It also means to project or Glow with cheerfulness, joy, peace. Do you ever, you ever uh, 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 describe somebody and say, uh, you know what, they, they, just, they radiate such um, goodness and humor and happiness in their life. Or they radiate such peace. Come on. I mean, what, what, what would people say about you? You know, when you walk into a room, what are you radiating? Peace? Or, oh man, I'll tell you what, I went to Wawa and got my coffee and then I ran out, somebody pulled in front of me and knocked my coffee over, got everything wet, oh my God, you know. And um, so you have these conversations, you know, on, in the workplace, so how rough your day was. And what are you radiating? We're all radiating something. Come on, we're all radiating. You know, and you could, listen, people could radiate stuff, you don't, they don't even have to say anything. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You ever come up against somebody that is radiating stuff? Mm, huh? You know, it's, it's sort of like, uh, you know, well, hang on, no, I'm not. <laughs> but they can radiate stuff. I mean, you can almost smell it. You know what I'm saying? They're just radiating stuff because what is in you is going to come out of you. Amen? If you're in the flesh, the flesh will come out of you. If you're in the spirit and you are awakened, to the presence of God in your everyday life, you're going to radiate his presence and his hope. Amen. The Webster's 1828 Dictionary talks about radiant, being radiant. It means shooting or darting rays of light, beaming with brightness. You know, I've heard, I've, I've heard stories. Uh, one of, uh, uh, you know, people that were into the demonic realm and witchcraft and all that kind of stuff, and... Uh, uh, they would come past this house. Uh, you know, the guy got saved later. He tells the story. He would come past this house where these believers were gathered, and he would look in the window, and he would see them all like on fire, like like just bright lights that were, you know, emanating, radiating, you know, this this heat, this light. You don't even realize that's that's you. If Christ is in you, the hope of glory is in you. You are radiating that. So you are the light. You are the light. 
We're not waiting for another light to come. I said we're not waiting for another light to come. We are the light. And, and listen, I'm telling you, the reason why America is in such difficult uh, circumstances right now is because I personally don't believe that the church in America has radiated the light that it needs to. <clears throat> Matthew 5, 14 through 16 in the Passion Translation says this. Your lives are what light up the world. <laughs> Your lives are what light up the world. That's pretty heavy. That's all I can tell you. I mean, that's... Your lives, our lives, our lives. Just a little old me. I mean, you know, who am I? You're a light. Your light and your life. He said, your lives are what light up the world. Let others see your light from a distance. For how can you hide a city that stands on a hilltop? And who would light a lamp and hide it in an obscure place? Instead, it's a place where everyone in the house can benefit from its light. So don't hide your light. Let it shine brightly before others so that the commendable things that you do will shine as light upon them. And then they will give their praise to your Father in heaven. Wow. Wow. You are the light. You are the light that lights up the darkness that shows people you know, I remember uh, Jerry Savelle telling the story how he was in a, a grocery store and he's walking down the one aisle and, 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 and this lady comes around the aisle and, and, and she says, you're the one, you're the one. And he's like, the one what? You know, <laughs> did I steal something? I mean, when you, when you say I'm the one. I said, you're the one, you're the one. I was going down the aisle and I saw the light around you. God told me I would, I would meet somebody today that would have an answer you know, from my situation, you are the one. You are the light. So he says, let us do with greater urgency. I'm sorry, let me back up. Uh, Hebrews chapter 10, uh, we, we, we shared, you know, Hebrews 10, 22, it says, let us draw near to uh, with a true heart and full assurance of faith. And then just a couple of uh, uh, verses later in 10, 25 Hebrews, it says this, in the light of our free access to the Father, let us extend that embrace to one another. Our gatherings are no longer a repetition of tradition, but an essential fellowship. We've heard a lot about essential workers during this pandemic. Essential workers. And he says here, our gatherings are no longer a repetition of tradition, but an essential, essential. In other words, it is absolutely necessary. How many you know that, that medical workers are necessary? Emergency workers are necessary. Police officers are necessary. Paramedics are necessary. He says the church is necessary. More than ever before, it is necessary. You know, and I, I, there was a, a survey that they did recently, and they said, you know, because how I many you know mental health has declined in America uh, amongst the population, amongst children, teenagers, young adults, uh, older people, uh, the mental health uh, has declined. But when they did the study, they found that the people with the best mental health in America right now are the people that have been going to church regularly in fellowship. You got good mental health. Why? Because you are essential, and what we do gathering together is essential. He says, our gatherings are no longer a repetition of tradition, but an essential fellowship where we remind one another of our true identity. So let us do so with greater urgency. Now the day has dawned in our understanding. The prophetic shadow has been replaced by the light of day. In other translations, it says, when we see the day approaching, the day approaching. How many know what he's talking about there? The day approaching. The culmination of all things, right? Uh, some say the return of Jesus, uh, the rapture. You know, we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. 
you know, that we are so focused and so many in the church are focused on, you know, he, he's coming soon. He's coming soon. You know, people are posting stuff, you know, I, I mean, you know, you look at what's happening. Look at what's happening in America. Look at what's happening around the world. I mean, you know, it's China, North Korea, Russia, you know, I mean, he's coming. Soon. They're all, it's all coming together. And Jesus is coming back any minute now, any minute now he's coming back. Would you think that if this is true, that, that Jesus is coming back any moment in time that we need to get ready for him to come back. He says, you ought, listen, you ought to with even greater urgency, you ought to be gathering together because it's essential if his coming is soon. And yet thousands of churches refuse to gather. Now, I don't want to offend anybody, but I usually do. But I've said it many times, see, because I, I, I believe that this is essential. And, you know, if somebody is, is sick in body or whatever, you know, we understand. We tell people to stay home if you're sick, you know, or come and get prayed for and get healed. But, you know, if, if you, you, know, you feel like you need to be home, that, that, I understand that. But. You can go to BJ's, you can go to Costco, you can go to Home Depot, uh, you can go to places and, and wall to wall people everywhere. Okay, they're wearing a mask, but they ought to be, I guess, because they're really close to one another. Uh, but, you know, in, in here, you don't have to get close to anybody if you don't want to. Spread out if you want to. All I'm saying is, well, you wear a mask, you don't wear a mask, you stay away from people, you don't, whatever you do, this is essential. I, I, I believed what the word says. He said, listen, you know, if, if, if you think the day is approaching, then it's pretty essential that you get together. And listen, like never before, you may not have thought, you know, well, this is not the time to invite somebody to church. It's the best time to invite somebody to church. I'm telling you, don't wait until, you know, whatever, you know, if, if uh, you know, uh, Dr. Fauci uh, uh, says it's okay, or the governor or whoever else says it's okay, I don't know when they're ever going to say it's okay. I don't think I've heard anybody say anything about okay. I don't know if you know, so actually his, his name means mouth, Dr. Fauci. I just, just throw that out there. But, you know, are, are we going to wait? Are we going to just wait until somebody says, okay, you can, you can get together now if you want to. You know, we, we think it might be safe. May, listen, if you can go all those other places, you can handle all that stuff in the store. You can come to church. And I'm telling you, you need it more than you realize. You need it. You know, uh, when, when this thing first started, you know, a whole lot of churches went online and they were, you know, doing the services online and people were watching. But little by little, they started falling off. And now hardly anybody is watching online. Why? Because it ain't the same. Thank God for online, amen, you know. I thank God for TV ministries, all that kind of stuff, and whatever way you want to listen, to, that's okay, you know, you can receive from that, but there's nothing like the gathering together of the saints, and he puts it right here, and he says, listen, when things are getting rough, and it looks like the time is coming, it is more essential than ever before to be gathered together and encouraging one another. So much more as you see the day approaching, encourage one another. I'm telling you what, I'm encouraged when I see your face. You may not be looking at me, but I'm telling you, I'm encouraged seeing you. Because you're the light. And you need to radiate like never before. You need to get it in your heart, intentional. I'm going to radiate. I'm going to let my light so shine. And now listen, I don't mean you got to, you know, uh, uh, get a soapbox and start preaching to people right away. Uh, okay, if you want to do that, I'm just saying, listen, you can radiate your life. It says by the works that you do, the way you act, the, the stuff you do, the things you say, you radiate life and hope to people like never before. Can you say amen? So I want to play a song that was written and, 
and sung by our prophet son, Matthew, who moved to heaven a few years ago. But he wrote this song that is more appropriate today than ever before. And I'm going to put the words up on the screen. I want you to just read the words and listen to it because it's a message for today. And it's called Radiate. And then we're going to receive communion. Long before you were born. Hallelujah. Stand your feet, would you? We're going to end this year with joy, with peace, and with a heart of assurance that says, I will radiate. 
now and in this new year with hope, with love and life and light for those that are in darkness. <clears throat> I'm going to invite you to come. Um,